How's it going, everyone? Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. Last week, we talked about the Gable Radio HF750T. It's a set of really tiny coils that is intended for um, operation POTA, SODA, um, very minimalistic uh, pack, something that is lightweight and tiny as far as the amount of cube that it takes up. 14 megahertz, so here's my 20 meter coil. The 10 meter coil is on the Gable MK3 tripod in the backyard right now. Actually, I should say back porch in its most compromised position, right up against the wall, right underneath some aluminum fascia soffit and downspout. So the purpose this week is to talk about using this particular antenna in the most extreme circumstances possible. Some of you would wanna take this maybe on a business trip, use it in a hotel because it's just that small. You just put it on a balcony while you're traveling or as I said earlier, poda or soda. You should be expecting to make a lot of local, regional, and within your continent contacts and some DX, but not a lot of DX. This antenna whip itself, you know, it's less than five feet 10 because I'm five feet 10. And when I put this on a tripod and extend it, it's still a couple of inches shorter than I am. So understand what you have here is very compact, lightweight equipment. And you adjust the element, the antenna, telescoping antenna to these lengths, or you like me would use, you know, an antenna analyzer. And because I do so much antenna test testing, I have invested obviously in a very expensive antenna analyzer and that's how i dial in antennas like this but you can use the length descriptions here you can use your transceiver many transceivers have the ability to do this but what am i doing today well actually right now i'm running some whisper tests so this is my zach tech whisper transmitter and i'm currently running it on 10 meters you can see the transmit is on and you can see right here that it is transmitting for a period of time and then it will go into an off scenario and when i do a multi-banded antenna i can test 80 through 10 just non-stop it'll just switch from band to band right now i've got the 10 meter coil in the backyard so i'm just testing 10 meters i'm going to do the same with 20 meters and then basically I'm going to go over to my whisper map and see what it looks like. Now, 10 meters isn't doing so great this morning, not even with my wire antenna, but nonetheless, you know what? When I go to operate radio, I take what I have, I use the conditions that are available and I try to operate. So I'm not going to play games with the results. I'm just showing you what I have right now after maybe an hour of transmitting. It will get a lot more impressive, I would say, than what we see now as the conditions improve throughout the day. So I'm going to do this on 10 meters and 20 meters. What am I going to do? Well, some of you live like me in a homeowners association, and maybe some of you have homeowners associations which are more strict than mine. And maybe you need something that is this tiny and small that you can put behind a small sapling tree or maybe even just a shrub. Remember, this thing is shorter than I am when it's fully deployed. You could hide this behind a small arborvitae tree. You could just hide this in a flower pot. I'm doing this right up against my house. I'm putting this in the worst potential situation possible so we can see if it will actually make some contacts. If you live in a condominium, you live in a rental property and your rental agreement prohibits you from using, I should say, putting up, installing antennas. Can you put a pot in your front yard, your backyard, right up against the house, right next to your front door and stick this in the flower pot with a ground spike and operate? I'm gonna say yes, you can, and let's prove it out with some of the results. We'll do some FT8 and Whisper. Let me show you the setup, and then as we go along, we'll actually show you the results. I'm still in testing mode, so as this video progresses, I'm going to be getting the results and sharing them with you. Before I go any further, I wanna let you know there's a 15% discount in the description below on this antenna kit through April 15th, 2025. If you're watching this video after that, my apologies, but do watch the channel because there are a lot of new and exciting things coming from Gable. Yes, Gable Radio is developing a screwdriver antenna. This is their controller. It's not yet on the market. I'm in the process of testing it right now. So far, quite impressed. And then there are some more things coming from Gable Radio that are just gonna make your head spin. 
It's an overcast, dreary day here in the HOA, and here I am on my back porch. I do want to show you that right above my head, that dark green color, that is aluminum fascia, aluminum gutter, aluminum downspout, and aluminum soffit. There is so much metal that is going to be right above this antenna. And this is what I mean when I say I'm really putting this in a compromised position. That soffit, I'm going to say, gee, I wish I would have measured it when I was outside. It can't be but eight feet off the ground, if that. So I'm 5'10", you know, that soffit is going to be three feet above the top of this antenna when I fully extend it. So the operating conditions are my MK3 tripod from Gable. I'm using the UHF connector, and then I'm using an adapter to get over to the BNC. Watch the prior video. I'll show you how to make all of those adapters. There I toss my bundle of three radial wires. I use super silky smooth silicone wire so it never tangles. It's a bundle of three at 16 and a half foot each. These are going to be spread out over a concrete slab. That is a four inch thick concrete slab. There's no rebar, there's no reinforcement mesh underneath there. So it's just four inches of concrete and then the bare ground here in Florida. My coax is 50 feet long. I'm going to snake it over top that little concrete block barrier there on the front of the porch. And then I'm going to take it over top of the ground surface back to my single point entry ground system in the home. Let's go ahead and speed up the video here and then when I get to the end of extending the whip, I will let you see how tall it is compared to me, and then we'll get over to tuning this antenna. That's right, even as a general class ham, I still refer to my band chart. I tend not to fill my mind with details that I can get on a reference card or reference manual. There just isn't that much free space left. I use an antenna analyzer to adjust my antennas always because that's what I'm used to. You can use the single page instruction sheet which comes with these antenna coils. It just tells you how long to make the whip for each band. Here I'm adjusting the whip length and there is a slightly different whip length for each band coil. The only difference between today and yesterday, which was when you saw me last on screen, is that I've lost 24 hours of my life. These are yesterday's band conditions, and as I'll show you in a second, they haven't gotten any better today. You did see my 10 meter whisper map after an hour of operating, and I'll show you that map updated after four hours of operating. It did populate a little better, but 10 meters really didn't improve that much for me. I jumped on over to FT8, was able to make a couple of contacts, and you can see from PS SK Reporter, it's a pretty sparse map. This seems to be indicative of the conditions today. When I had my antenna, this tiny little HF750 out in free space did perform better, but the conditions were exponentially better than they are right now. So I jumped over to 20 meters. In other words, I went outside, I changed out the coil, I tuned to 20 meters, and here are my results on FT8. I was able to make a couple of contacts within the first 15 minutes, and then PSK Reporter is a little bit more respectful here on 20 meters than it was on 10 meters. I ran my whisper map for about 12 hours overnight and it does look pretty respectable. What I want to demonstrate to you and talk to you about before I give you a tip and trick here um, and show you today's results, there are some tips and tricks you need to know for using this antenna in some type of permanent situation if you're going to go with this right and you're super um, compromised uh, area. You're putting this in a flower pot at your front door. You're hiding it behind a tree. You're trying to be super stealth. Well, let me tell you a couple things here in just a second. I want to point out as you look at all the results, whether it's PSK Reporter or my Whisper Maps, that my house where I'm located in Florida the antenna is on the south side of my house. So remember all of that aluminum, uh, aluminum fascia, soffit, gutter, downspout? So all the reports are north of my house. So I guess I'm just pointing that out to say the signal seems to still be able to get through going <laughs> through my block wall, going through that aluminum fascia soffit downspout. It doesn't seem to be impacting it near as much as perhaps I thought it would. I thought it would just basically trash the signal. Now, again, you never do stuff like this unless you have to. You don't put up a tiny compromised antenna at your station referencing antenna unless you live in a condo, a townhouse, a rental property, a super strict HOA, because this antenna 
as your station reference antenna is better than no antenna. And that's all I'm trying to help you understand today. All right, over to the tip and trick. The MK3 tripod from Gable is on the back porch. It has the 14 megahertz 20 meter coil on it with a whip. Of course, I own um, multiple kits. I wanted to buy one that actually had the Gable radio logo. And while we're having this conversation, why don't I just pause for a moment here? I wasn't thinking about doing this, but why not go ahead and have this conversation, whether you realize it or not. Um, Gable radio is a manufacturer and they'll do private labeling for companies. You've seen their 7350T out there with a couple of different people's branding on it. Gable Radio has likely made that. That might be made by a couple of other people somewhere else in the, the world, I don't know. But Gable Radio is a manufacturer. It's one of the reasons why um, I kind of highlight them and I work with them. I take your ideas and suggestions that you provide to me and my ideas and suggestions. And that's what's resulted in a lot of the gear that we've seen from Gable Radio that's customized to the U.S. market. They focus on the Asia market and the European market, and our voice is what they hear for the U.S. market. And that's why if you've seen these coils from anybody else... You know what, they might have a label on them, but they don't have, you know, logo and printing like this because Gable's the manufacturer and they're putting their branding on it. You've noticed that about me. I focus on very few manufacturers in antennas because I laser focus in on people that I value what they bring to us as amateur radio operators. So enough about that. What is the tip or the trick that I want to talk to you about with this antenna kit? Well, it's this. I've already shown you how to convert this over to a 3 8 by 24. Like I said, the MK3 is in the backyard. This is a blank adapter from Chameleon 3 8 by 24. If you want to go 3 8 by 24, you get a 3 8 by 24 mirror mount. Take the 3 8 by 24 nut off the top of it. Whoops, did that in the last video. And then you're left with a 3 8 by 24 stud with a UHF connector on the top. Then you take the UHF connector that'll take you over to B and C. Come on, camera, you can do it. There it is. And you put that on top of here. And now you've got your B and C uh, female connector. Let's finish getting this in all the way. Okay, so here is the first thing you need to understand. This top piece of that B and C connector will spin on you, not the nut, but this top piece here can spin. So if you go to put your BNC adapter on, it may spin, the top may spin, and you may not be able to fully engage this. So if you see this knurled round, I can't call it the nut because it's round, um, it, it is separate from this. This is one piece, this is a separate piece. So, you know, you need to either get your fingers on that, which is hard to do and it's gonna be hard to show, or take a needle nose pliers like this, and now you can see that I'm on that nut. You can do this with your fingers, then spin your BNC connector, and then it fully engages. All right, so that's the first thing that I wanted to point out to you because some of you may struggle with that. This may spin on you and you don't understand why. The second thing is this. If you are going to leave this outdoor, this is going to become your antenna because you're in one of those super strict positions where you're on a rental property and you can't um, hang a wire antenna or put a stake in the ground or a vertical in the backyard and you need something like this in a flower pot or behind a tree and you decide to put this outside for a long period of time, I would take some self amalgamating tape and I would wrap that BNC. Let's get my arm out of the way. I would wrap, let's get me out of the way. Good grief, there we go. Bob's gone. I would put some self amalgamating tape from here all the way down. And that way you will protect this from the weather. And again, that assumes that you're going to put this up outside long term. Again, this antenna, um, it's meant to be a fun antenna to take Poda, Soda, portable, ultra conservative, ultra small, lightweight, tiny, low cube, right? That's what this was developed for. But you might need this as a station reference antenna because there's nothing else you can get up that won't be detected this might be the best use case for you. Now, let's talk about today's results. 
already had the 20 meter coil set up from my whisper test, so I turned on FT8 again today. Was able to uh, call CQ and complete a QSO. It was rough going. The bands just are not cooperating again today, and you can see that from today's band conditions. I do now want to just take this outside real quick, and I'll overlay a picture here because this is the tiny pod kit that I talked to you about. That's not Gable's name for it. I'll put it in the description. I just call it the tiny pod because it's a tiny tripod as well as a ground stake. And there's a secondary ground stake that will attach to their UHF connector that has a pigtail to go to your coax. So I'm going to stick this in the ground behind a tree. And again, by now, probably there's been a picture overlaid here because I think this is a great way to deploy it in a flower pot. So what are my final thoughts on this particular antenna system? I say this all the time. Know what your use case is and know what your antenna can do. Understand what the manufacturer intended it for and install it like the manufacturer suggests. Sometimes you have to adapt to your circumstances. This is a tiny, lightweight, small antenna meant for fun. Poda, soda, taking on a business trip, a vacation, something that will take up a lot of space and you can make plenty of local, regional contacts within your continent. You'll even make some DX contacts, but it's not going to perform like a long wire antenna or some super tall vertical, multi-banded vertical. This has a specific use case. If you're one of those individuals in a super strict HOA, a rental property, a condo, a townhouse, and all you can do is to get some antenna up on a single band, fully deployed, shorter than you are, stuck in a flower pot, and that's all you can do? Well, guess what? That's a pretty darn good antenna if you can pull that off when that's all you can do. You can make digital contacts, 20 to 25 watts on this antenna, single sideband up to 50 watts. So my take on this, for what it was designed for and intended for, it absolutely performs to that. And I showed that and proved that in the last video. And if you're in a super compromised uh, situation or you need something small, lightweight, compact for uh, a business trip or vacation, this fits the bill. Hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.